The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has begun brainstorming and zoning arrangement for its national convention ahead of the 2023 general election. And of course, the threat of a third force and a competition to the existing and established political forces has raised tension within the political space and the quality of leadership Nigeria needs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Politics Today. We are live for you in Abuja, the nation's political capital. I'm Sean Wakimbalo here. Welcome, everyone. And let's begin tonight by telling you that the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, was in Kaduna State today, and he's hopeful about a greater Nigeria where investments in new uh, trade, commerce, and economic frontiers will help make well, lives I of Nigerians better yeah. and put the nation in a good place within a global competitive market. The Vice President was speaking at the opening session of the Kaduna Investor Investment Forum. 2015, when we came into office, the... As you know, I follow your activities uh, closely in Kaduna State because of the seriousness you have brought to subnational governance in Nigeria. The rigor and innovation, I think just listening to you, the rigor and innovation that you and your team have brought to policy formulation and implementation is clearly an exemplar for what is possible in the states and indeed what is possible in the nation. You must all be commended for the consistency that has been a strong characteristic of your administration. Cardinvest has been held annually over the past six years and has evolved over time from the launch of the development plan to the unveiling of the Kaduna Infrastructure Master Plan and the Urban Renewal Project. So this summit has become a platform not just to market Kaduna but Nigeria as a compelling business destination for investment. Well, tonight our conversation will be robust. And uh, whatever we're talking about tonight is about you, the average Nigerian citizen, or well, the politically exposed citizen, or a citizen that is not in Nigeria but loves Nigeria. Oh, well, if you're not a Nigerian citizen but you are interested in Nigeria's politics, it's all for us to look at Nigeria, the politics, and the nearest future. But before we get into that interesting conversation tonight, let's check out some of your uh, stories on the political roundup. The federal government says it is making efforts to get justice in the case involving Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Bo. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, was reacting to the judgment of an Oyo State High Court that awarded damages in Ibo's favor. We are doing the needful in terms of looking at the law as it exists and then working within the context of the law in ensuring that justice is done as far as the contending uh, issues between the parties are concerned. The People's Democratic Party is calling for the immediate resignation and investigation of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Gordon Emefiele, over allegations of allowing massive looting of funds in the Apex Bank. The PDP National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Kola Logbodio, at a news conference in Abuja, maintains that the call is premised on the comment he attributes to the National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress that Mr. Emefiele superintended over looting in the Apex Bank. The PDP also condemned the Apex Bank for allowing the value of the Naira to fall freely against the dollar. High-level politicking is going on in the country within the political space over the zoning or rotation arrangement, whichever language you might want to use, zoning, rotation, well, we're talking about the same thing. And it's all about the presidency in 2023. In the People's Democratic Party, PDP, different forces are already making their permutations and lobbying over where the party should zone the presidency, which will in turn affect where the different national offices of the party will be zoned. Today, the governor of uh, Enugu State um, will, is leading 
the uh, PDP zoning committee set up by the party met in Enugu and the outcome of their meeting will go a long way to determine where the PDP will go as far as the 2023 race is concerned. The last time we checked, uh, the meeting uh, was still on in Enugu and um, the, as at the time the program started, no update as to the outcome of that meeting of the PDP zoning committee. Meanwhile, a group known as a Rescue Nigeria Project has sent out a stern warning to the established political forces in the country about the sort of leadership the, Nige the nation and uh, the Nigerian people need. The group has been welcomed by other groups with similar interests, like the, uh, the National Consultative Forum, who are basically warning the ruling APC and the main opposition PDP <clears throat> to get ready to leave the stage for them in 2023. What does this mean? Tonight, we shall be taking up these issues, first and foremost, the kind of leadership we need in Nigeria, uh, the quality of persons that should run for office, whether or not the PDP and APC have done uh, their own bit for the development of Nigeria, as far as some of these other alternative or the thought force groups are concerned. The thing that, in fact, they said it outrightly at some point, that the PDP and the APC are the evil of the Nigeria politics and the problem of Nigeria. The PDP and APC have since uh, said that is not true. So we want to bring the conversation to you tonight as a citizen for you to be the judge, the PDP, the APC, the thought force, where should we turn to in 2023? I'm being joined tonight by a PDP chieftain and a political, political historian, Dr. Umar Ado. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ado, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Also, uh, is a, a former minority leader in the House of Representatives, Honorable Farouk Adamu Aliyu. He's a chieftain of the APC. Thank you so much, Honorable Aliyu, for joining us tonight. Thank you. And one of the leading forces, uh, voices in uh, the thought force, um, the, one of the members of uh, the Rescue Nigeria Project, Elijah Usman Bugaje, is here with us too. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, uh, I think it, it's easy for one to say that three wise men <laughs> from three different uh, uh, sphere of Nigeria politics are here tonight. And let's get uh, at it first and foremost. Let me begin with um, um, uh, Elijah Bugaje, who feels that... Um, the status quo has to change. Why does the Rescue Nigeria <coughs> project come up? Why do you think the status quo needs to change? I thought you were asking a very obvious question. I mean, the answer is obvious. In the last 20 years, look at the indices of democracy. Poverty has more than doubled. Insecurity has multiplied. Corruption has escalated. Look at the jobs that have not been created. Look at the young people. Look at children out of school. Look at, look at, you can go on listing. We, we, we have been part of PDP. We have been part of APC. We have seen that what needed to be done to address the problems of this country have not been done. And we have not seen a readiness within and we have tried to analyze what exactly is the problem of this country when you reduce everything to what it is it comes to leadership and our argument is the leadership recruitment mechanism within the political parties at the moment does not prioritize knowledge does not prioritize uh, competence does not prioritize character and these are the critical things you require world over from Greek antiquity to modern uh, contemporary times, these are the essentials. Most parties, and it's not just the PDP and the APC, the other parties are no better in this respect. That is, we entirely rely on eligibility of the Constitution. We have no criteria for suitability. And this country cannot continue like that. So we, we, we are basically saying we want these parties to introduce a set of criteria for the different offices. Now, if I come to APC now or I come to PDP and talk to them, they won't listen to me because I don't have money. I don't have large number of people around me. 
I have done that before in both talking and in terms of writing. There was a time when there were uh, 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 reforms to be taken place, and we all made submissions, but these things were not addressed. What we are basically saying is that Nigerians that are worried about the future of their country need to come together and engage the parties until the parties are ready to introduce criteria that would prioritize knowledge, that would prioritize competence, that would prioritize character. At the moment, I've not seen it. And I'll be pleased if it is there, but they are hiding it. Uh, man, it's interesting. Uh, the Rescue Nigeria <clears throat> project seems to have somewhat a very a milder look at uh, the way and manner thought force or the alternative in 2023 should go. For people like um, Dr. Ha uh, Akim Baba Ahmed, he, he, he thinks that the PDP and APC are no options. That in fact, you cannot find the kind of leaders that Nigeria needs in 2003 in those parties. He doesn't believe that those parties, in fact, should be uh, determining who becomes the next uh, president in Nigeria. But from what you have explained tonight, it does look like you, you, part of your checklist is that these political parties can remain as far as they can give the kind of leaders that Nigeria needs. So the question is that, Will these political parties listen to you? You've raised to that point that they won't listen to you because you don't have the money. So how do you want to go about it? Now, <clears throat> we're trying to be as practical as possible. In the real world, nobody gets what he deserves. You only get what you negotiate for. And the currency for negotiation is power. Power can be political, can be economic, can be military, can be intellectual, can be moral. It can also be demographic. We are trying to mobilize the demographic power of Nigerians that are worried. And then we can engage the political parties. So we're going to acquire power that will allow us to negotiate, to talk to them. Which of the powers are you? Is it the intellectual part? We have intellectual. You don't have the military. We don't have the military. We don't even like the military, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not an option. <laughs> no, 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 no. That no. is, in fact, not an option. <laughs> no, no, it's not, not for yeah. that. But right? you, you have the intellectual. We have intellectuals. We have moral capital. We are trying to acquire the demographic power, right? Now, somebody can dismiss the efforts we are making, fair enough, but let's try. If you come up with something that is better than what we're doing, we'll keep what we're doing, and we pick it up. Do you what think that to see, PDP what we want or to see, APC have the criteria, or I mean, they have what it at takes the moment, to produce? At the moment, I have not seen that criteria. Do you it's think they there. have personalities that, that fit into the bill of the kind of leaders that we need? Oh, they do. They do? But the processes, the recruitment processes, doesn't allow you to get there. They do. How would you assess the APC, for example? Let's start from there. In terms of what? In terms of governance, in terms of performance, delivery of what Just promise. Talk, talk to the ordinary Nigerian now, mm -hmm. and then, then he will tell you what he thinks. What do you think? It's obvious. You know, insecurity has multiplied. Poverty has increased. Jobs have not been created. Debts have been mounting. Corruption has been escalating. These are obvious things. I mean, these are things that... And because you are, you are an intellectual uh, personality, so I would like to uh, gauge, because gauging or measuring is also a way of uh, You of go to knowledge. the National Bureau for Statistics. Yeah, you no, get no. the figures. The point I'm even making is that in your own assessment, fail, pass, how would you, what would you rate the APC right now? These are terms that are relative. Because you are not using an accurate. But for me, for me, I have not seen anything to give me hope that either APC or PDP, without introducing criteria in the selection of leadership, I can't see how they can improve the, this right. country. Let me allow, because the man sitting beside you is a very powerful man in the APC. <laughs> I know him as much as you do, <laughs> or more. So let's hear from him, because your assessment of the APC, I, I'm not sure he does agree. He's been smiling since we're talking. So Honorable Adamu uh, uh, let me allow you to react to what uh, Elijah Bukuja just said. Well, okay, you see, uh, some of, uh, you know, my brother here, 
some of the things he said are very subjective. And uh, thank God, he was with me in the National Assembly. He was in the PDP. And uh, he was also in APC. You see, it's so convenient, really, for probably people to sit from their comfort zones and criticize. And I, I commend them by, I mean, for being intellectuals who think what we do as practical politicians is wrong. I challenge them also. I dare them. Let them come into the field not to speak English or grammar or rhetorics. But look, we are all Nigerians. They are not coming from heaven or we are coming from heaven. And whatever we do is a reflection of us as a whole, as a country, as a people. Now, are there challenges in this country? Yes, there are challenges. Could there be improvement? Yes. And we are not telling you, we are not telling Nigerians that APC is doing everything correct. No. We have some mistakes here and there. And as a people, as a people, if Nigerians look at us straight, just like what they are doing, it is good. Look at us straight and tell us that, look, the economy is bad, there is no security, there is no this, there is no that. Let us discuss these issues. When 2023 comes, we will go and remind the people what we have done as a party to improve the lives of the people so that, look, when we go to the polls, if APC does not do well, let Nigerians vote us out. Simple, pure, uh, you know, uh, and square. But the characters I have seen of my senior brother here <laughs> and Professor Jega, whom I thank God that he has come in now as Professor of Law, of I, politics, of politi so, oh, sorry, pro pro Professor of Politics, talking about bringing Nigeria to 24 states, that's good. He has taught this thing in the classroom. Now he's decided to join. He will see that, look, this country belongs to all of us. They, the intellectuals, we, the politicians, that if we don't put heads together, but if you sit on the other side and criticize, my senior brother here, we have begged and begged and begged for him to be with us and bring his intellectual capacity with us. But he wouldn't. But thank God now he has decided to go and join the other force. And I dare him. And I am telling you, we shall defeat Dr. Bugaje in Katsina, <laughs> where he comes from. I'm telling you, we will defeat Bugaje, we will defeat Jega, in, we will defeat Hakim, we will defeat Pat Utomi, we will defeat all of them. And now I'm speaking on behalf of even APC and PDP. Uh, because, Pat Utomi is part of you in APC. Well, Pat Utomi has decided to go to the other side. I think he's also joining them. <laughs> so I'm challenging all of them. All these intellectuals. So you have this confidence. Absolutely. Like I'm, in APC, you know what? Look, listen. You see, in APC, people have forgotten, you know, have forgotten how, where we met, how this country was, and where we are today. Yes, there are challenges. But it's so convenient for you and I to sit here and say, challenge security is bad. Yes, there are challenges in security. But Abuja here was not secure. Now it is. Are there challenges elsewhere? Yes, there are. But there's a lot of improvement in that's in the security system. When he spoke about debt and so on, yes, it's true. People have forgotten that these debt servicing we're doing now is not debt taken by APC. No, this is servicing of debt that were taken by previous governments. You know, there are moratoria. I'm not sure that. Yes, yeah, I'm telling you, some I'm not of them. Sure that's true. No, but some I'll, of them. I'll bring out some of the yeah, figures for you. I said yeah, some of them. Right. Some of the servicing we are doing are from facilities we've taken as a people, as a country back in the days. And look, we are taking money, the loans, not to go and pay salaries only. We are taking money to put infrastructure. This country had never seen revolution in infrastructure than this time around right. when APC came to power. Honorable uh, Ali, just for a moment, we need to take a breather. Uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> Dr. Adro has been wanting to respond to you, but we'll take a breather. But when we come back, for some of the conversations around what has been done, how it should be done. I'm happy we are having a conversation on the quality of leadership and the kind of expectations Nigerians should have of their leaders. We'll take a break and when we come back, more on these issues. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. The conversation is around 2023, the kind of leadership that Nigeria needs, and 
whether or not there is a need for an alternative to the present political uh, forces that we have in Nigeria. There is a thought force, some groups of uh, um, eminent Nigerians who have come together to say they need to oust the present political forces in Nigeria and bring a fresh blood into the system. Laji Usman Bugaje is one of uh, such uh, Nigerians who are in uh, thinking as a such is of the Rescue Nigeria project. And Honorable Farouk Adamu Aliyu, a former minority leader and a chieftain of the APC. And here is also Dr. Ado, he is a chieftain of the PDP, a political historian. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming in tonight. Let me come to you. Uh, your party has received some bashing from uh, the likes of uh, uh, Elijah Bugaje. That look, in fact, they had said that your party had failed Nigeria in 16 years, and they don't really sure of what the APC had, uh, is doing for Nigeria at the moment. Your party has the agenda of coming back to prominence in 2023. Uh, as we said earlier on, there is uh, a meeting. We don't know whether it's now concluded. But it's held in um, Enugu, where the zoning committee of the PDP are meeting. That was the arrival earlier uh, this evening when the members of that committee, committee to be, uh, that is led by the governor of Enugu State, uh, Ifai Ogwai, uh, who has led that committee to determine the zoning arrangement for the PDP for the national convention and for 2023. So, Dr. Ado. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, I've been a PDP member from 1998. I served in PDP government. But if you follow my politics, you will see that I have always been an, an internal opposition within the party. Now, the basic problem of our country is uh, how operators of the system uh, operate the system. It's been a fundamental problem. It is not actually about APC. It is not about PDP. It is not even about the third force because... We have in the PDP some APC members who moved in. We have in the APC some PDP members who moved in. And within the third force, we have some APC members, we have some PDP members there that form this third force. But will our operators operate the system in such a way and manner that will comply with the laws of the land? That has always been the problem. And it is the problem that is currently facing the PDP. Yes, you have said that uh, committees have been set, conventional committee has been set in PDP, uh, uh, convention committee, then the zoning committee that just, that are meeting right now, the uh, committee members meeting right now in Enugu, yeah. But there are, things happen before that happen. The provision of the law was not duly followed in making such decisions and especially especially in the recent action of the party by removing the national chairman of the party, Prince Richard Secondus. You don't we, agree with that? No, of course, we don't agree with that. The Secondus group, they don't agree, and as we speak now, Secondus is at the Court of Appeal. You see, you will have, to, if you I commit an offense, you will serve me with a summon. But where somebody will just touch your shoulder and then serve you with a judgment, already you are being judged, your head is being shaved, you know, in your absence, it's wrong. Are you surprised by that? That is no. not the first time we've seen this no, kind no, of thing happen I should, I to should, the leadership I should, of the PDP. I should be the one that should tell you this, because I have fought this kind of impunity within the PDP for as long as I can remember. I have gone to 11 courts in this country. Five court at the high court level, I've been to state court, I've been to uh, uh, FCT court, I've been to federal high court at the high court level five times. Three times at the court of appeal, three times at the Supreme Court. All on issues of internal democracy and oppression of the system within the partisan politics of the country. Do you know how some members and, of your and, party, sorry Dr. Mm, Ado, mm. do you know how they describe the situation in your party? And I can tell mention me, more me. than seven or eight leaders of the chairman of your party that has never been able to see through their time in the office. They call it a systemic curse that has happened to the PDP. It is not just the PDP. There is no major political party in this country whose leadership had run out its four-year term. Not one. 
not in APC, not in PDP, not in APGA, not in SDP, not in any political party that had formed uh, 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 a government, either at the state level or at the federal level or at the legislative level. None. So it is not just a PDP affair. It is an endemic issue that is Nigeria's affair. Now, can you imagine that there are two institutions that must be stable before democracy stabilizes in any country? That is the political party, the vehicle through which uh, power is acquired, and then the electoral body, the body that conducts the election that gives power. We did not have. From, from the uh, First Republic, we never had uh, uh, FEDECO or INEC or NEC or whatever that, that remain for a long period of time. The present INEC leadership is the, for the first time the leadership that is doing second term. Now, if these two basic uh, 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 institutions of democracy, they are not uh, stable, how do you expect democracy to stable? So yet, 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 those who have been elected in office, but are nominated by political parties and elected into office, wanted a second term, want to stabilize themselves, yet the mother party cannot stabilize themselves. I'll put you right on the spot, uh, Dr. Ado. Do you see your party getting back to the center in 2023? It is as feasible as uh, anything, yeah. But it will also depend on the mechanism, as uh, my elder brother, Dr. Osman Bugaje, said here, the mechanism for electing its uh, leader. So, so your party, so, is it so, better than the APC? No, the APC, you know, APC is actually not a political party per se. Doc, APC I, I, is I, I just... Remember, I remember Ali. No, 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 but, 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 but you see, these are, these are facts. <laughs> remember, no, hold on, it's a fact from your standpoint. Honorable Ali, you say your party is actually not a political party. It's simply party. a vehicle that gets people into office, that's all. But the basic elements of political party is not in the APC. That's why they don't even have an ESCO on the ground right now. Honorable Ali, I like you too. Yes, you know, you know we have defeated them in election twice now. So it's, you know, I think they're still not, they're not come out of it. So it's, he can say whatever he wants to say because he knows it's APC, a political party. It is. It is a political party. But then let's be serious. Uh, as at today, PDP is a political party. APC is a political party. Now, if he says APC cannot win election, that's subjective. We are, and uh, come 22, and you know what? How many people in droves from his own party, including serving governors, move into our party, which he calls not a party? So you think so, your party, it, that makes your party better than the party? I don't even think. I know our party is the best party in this country today. I'm telling you. And look, you know, we are allowing them to vent their spleen because we've been in opposition before. We know the pain in being in opposition. So they are still not woken up. Doctor here is still sad and angry that he's not in government because they are not in power, so they cannot actualize what they want to do. They have been there for 16 years. We all cried in this country. We were, we, they were voted out. In 2019, they came again. They were voted out. 2023, we shall vote them out also. Uh, 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 Honorable Bugaji, let me, let me bring you back into the conversation. There's been conversation because PDP is thinking about the zoning arrangement. Where do you think the presidency should be zoned in 2023? I don't want to know where the president is coming from. I want to know how competent is the president. So zoning for me doesn't make any sense. What I want is a competent Nigerian president who can rally this country together, who can uh, uh, take the advantages that Nigeria has and make it become the great nation that black people all the, throughout the world are you know, waiting to, to, to see. You've been in PDP, you've been in APC. Do you see such a person in either, any of the parties? Both PDP and APC have got people who have that capacity. But the processes of leadership recruitment that they have does not prioritize those people with those kind of skills and character to do that. What we are asking them to do is to introduce a set of criteria that will prioritize those skills, those competences, those characters that will now bring a leadership. And I'm not talking about just the president. 
the National Assembly, the governors, at every level. If there is a criteria, then you can be sure the people that are going to come, uh, at least 50% are going to perform. If we get even less than 50 trying to do the right thing, this country will begin to improve. I don't expect a miracle any time, any day, but that incremental improvement, you know, that over time resolves the problems of this country and positions it. And you see, there are certain things that the you know, politicians generally, not just APC, PDP, are not even taking in the radar. Now they are discussing zoning, right? Now, nobody, I've not heard, and if you do, please, I would like to know, this country in 10 years' time is going to, by United Nations projections, is going to be 300 million population. In 2050, 30 years or so from then, it's going to be... 450 or thereabouts, it will be the third country after India and China, the third most populated country in the world. Okay, how are we going to feed these people? How are we going to provide jobs? How are we going to provide health care? These are the kind of conversation that should be on the table. Well, well, That's where the president comes from. No, Honestly, no, no, it doesn't no, no, make no, any sense we, to me. We've, we've, uh, the, the idea of rotation has been established by the PDP when you were there. But now you don't think that it's valid any longer. It's not my agree? priority. It's not Do my priority. No, no, but see, yeah. If you say about uh, zoning, it's okay. Let's zone. But I will certainly agree with Dr. Bugaje that it's really not where the president comes from that is the issue. It's who the president is. Now, if we give you the example of the president. People voted President Buhari in 2015, not on account of APC, not on account of his manifesto, but on account of the man himself, his character, his integrity assumed. So you, that was why an old woman of 80 years plus will sit in the scorching sun somewhere in, uh, in, the, in the desert in, in Kevin State for a whole day waiting to see uh, uh, Buhari to donate to him, her life saved him to advance his political cause. Not because she expected anything, but because she believed you know, in it. That is why somebody can walk from Lagos you know, to Abuja in hilarious uh, joy, in, in an expectation that somebody has been elected and will make a change. So the biggest problem of Nigeria and the biggest burden on APC, you know, uh, uh, sorry to my, uh, uh, my friend, the biggest burden of APC is the colossal loss of confidence in the leadership of APC. I cannot see how they can surmount this thing. I just cannot see how they can do it. You don't, you don't think they have they any cannot character surmount it. in it's the party impossible. that can help them? It's impossible. Does the PDP have anybody? Of, of, of course, PDP has. Not that APC doesn't have, but that you see, how some people have it said? They say, Gani Gawani is a wani. They have seen it, you know, from their best. This is what their best can give. And if this is what their best can give, as they say, if such are the priests, God bless the congregation. Hmm. Honorable uh, Ademoli, you said you've seen your, well, Nigeria has seen your best. Well, um, nobody is telling you President Buhari is the best in APC. No. Good. This country is not about Buhari. No, it's about all of us. Be, be, you know, about all of us. As at the time we presented him, it wasn't that he was the best, but he came through electoral process, democracy, to become the candidate. You know, so and he became and he is. And look, whether some people are disappointed in us as a government, yes, of course, it's natural. You, you see, and sometimes. Let me concede that when you are in opposition, there are certain assumptions you make out of ignorance, sometimes out of sheer mischief, you know, sometimes just uh, you know, out, of, out of ignorance, as I said. Let me give an example. When we were you know, in opposition, we came around the whole country demonstrating against foil hike. That time, we were ignorant. That's the truth. I concede. Now, when we came in, we found out that, look, we think what Jonathan did, he was wrong at that time. 
In fact, subsidy should go. Because now we've come, we've found out that, look, there are certain things, there are certain indices that cannot continue to be, Nigeria cannot continue to be subsidizing petroleum products for the rest of West African countries and beyond. This is a reality. So, some of these things. But whether my brother, you know the way he said whether that we cannot win election, that's the beauty of democracy now. We call on Nigerians to please vote for the best party. If by 2023, Nigerians feel we are not the right people, so be it. But now talking about zoning, I believe in zoning in this country. Because unfortunately, we are not the same people. Unfortunately, yes, we are looking for the best in Nigeria and so on. But the way we are as Nigerians, sometimes you would want as a Nigerian, I'm speaking as a Nigerian now, that whether somebody is from your tribe or religion, so be it. So until such a time when we understand that, look, leader can come from any part of the country. But as of today, you must zone between Muslims and Christians, between South and North, and so on and so forth. Unless if it is the agreement of the party. Now, this is a party issue. If the party agrees to continue to zone its leadership into one area, but I assure you, any party in this country that decide to neglect one zone over the other will soon lose election. So l let me just summarize so that for the sake of our viewers, uh, the APC sold an agenda in ignorance to Nigerians. That's what you said. No, 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 no. no because no. you said wait, wait, that wait, wait. there are some things that yes. happened yes. and you told Nigerians, but you were not really aware of the depth of those things until you got into government. Well, so well, you were not really aware of a lot of things. That is, is that what you're saying? That is true. There are a lot of things we're not so aware. So you saw those First things of all, out of it? No, no, no. Wait, listen, listen. First of all, we never knew that the level of corruption that people are talking about now, the level of corruption in this country was that bad. We never knew that there were certain people that would sit on, around the table and share monies meant for fighting terrorism. We never knew. Has well, that stopped? It has. Completely, because we now as a government have invested so much money into hardware and software for the military. Dr. And Bugaya, I don't think you agree because you raised it earlier. Because you're saying I, that corruption is still ongoing. No, I'm not telling you there is no corruption. No, 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 no. There is, there is corruption still. Still corruption is going on. But now, this time around, nobody, you dare not sit and discuss corruption on, in the open. Back in the days... You sit around the table and share contracts, share monies, and so on. When PDP now, was in power, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, absolutely. That, 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 when they're in that, power. That, that, but that, that but, but now, true. I'm not telling you there is no corruption. No, because that's the reference course, he's making. Of course. <laughs> now, I can mention see, cases see, see, of corruption see, see. that are, you know, I'm not telling you that in our government there are no corrupt people. No. So there but, are corrupt people in this government? Oh, absolutely. There are. Have you identified them? Well, because some of them are being... Uh, investigated, and some members of our party, like the former secretary of the government, is being accused of corruption. Baba Chira, he's a member of our party. He's been prosecuted now. So, I mean, he's a member of our party, our family. He's a family member. So, that kind of a thing. And then a member of our party, two members of our party, former governors, are presently in jail, you know, for corruption. And so many members of this party are also being prosecuted. Until when they are convicted, then we'll call them corrupt. But as at now, the level of corruption in this country has drastically reduced. Right. So basically, because I like uh, uh, Dr. Bugaje and Dr. Ado to come back into the conversation, but if I get you right, in the time before the APC, corruption was being discussed openly. Absolutely. But now it's being discussed in Absolutely. In fact, let me tell you a story that was I mean, corruption was discussed in the villa that time. But well, it's not being discussed in or the villa. You, it's being discussed yeah, in the sec secret you, now. You, well... Yes, I am sure there are people in this, in my government, our government, that discuss corruption in the hide, in, I mean, hidden. You cannot dare now. You cannot discuss corruption. And that's because in the open. of President Buhari. Absolutely. Right. Because, because if you are found, you know what, what will happen to you. I'd like you to respond to that just in a moment. Because Dr. Bugaje's uh, looks <laughs> and his countenance doesn't exactly <laughs> agree with what uh, Honorable Adam Wali, we take another break. And when we come back, more conversation. The southern governors are saying that a presidency must come to go to the south in 2023. Well, we now understand that the PDP zoning committee has finished and concluded their meeting in Enugu. We'll tell you about the outcome when we return from this break, everyone. Join us again.
Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. We now can tell you that the People's Democratic Party Zoning Committee was met in Enugu today to discuss the zoning arrangement of the party ahead of the 2023 general election. I've concluded their meeting. It's been a six-hour closed-door meeting. The committee chairman and the Enugu State Governor, Ifan Uguayi, told journalists that it was a fruitful deliberation and the committee agreed to adjourn till next week when they will be reaching a conclusion. The meeting was attended by the committee members Party stakeholders, the Bedouin State Governor Samuel Autumn, former <coughs> Governor of Ekiti State Ayofayoshi, uh, former SGF Ayim Pius Ayim, and uh, Alaji Adamu Waziri, amongst others, were in attendance at that meeting. Let's continue the conversation with uh, my guests here in the studio. Uh, because of your uh, appointment and your engagement, uh, Dr. Bugaje, let me quickly uh, ask you uh, for your parting words before, before you take your leave. Um, you heard what um, uh, Honorable Ali has said. The question is, why or how are you different from the APC or the PDP? Are you bringing people whom we have never seen, or you're suggesting people that we have never seen before. How, in what way, are you different from the APC? Within the uh, Rescue Nigeria project, there are members of PDP, there are members of APC, there are members of other parties like the PRP, SDP, right? So it's not about a party, but it is about a platform where Nigerians, especially the young people, can come and engage the parties, not only PDP and APC, any other party. What we are basically asking political parties before they get to that 2023 selection process, they should put in or include a set of criteria for leadership. We think knowledge is important. We think uh, competence is important. We think character is important. Now, we can help in bringing practical suggestions how these things can be done. But we would want to see the next set of leaders at every level by any political party must go with criteria for suitability, not the criteria of eligibility that is provided by the Constitution. Are you planning to dovetail into a political party? At the moment, we are not. And we may, we may never need to if we are able to get parties or even a party that is prepared to bring in those criteria for leadership. Then we will recommend that party and we may join that party, whichever party it is. Because what we don't simply want to allow is business as usual. You know, elite in the party or leaders of the party just simply connive and bring in the kind of people they want and then there will be a continuity of the rot that we are seeing. We want change. We want things to improve. We want a situation where the next, you know, four years from 2023, we'll see a different Nigeria doing things differently, providing prosperity, creating jobs, using technology, bringing in, and you need knowledge. You need the character to be able to resist. You need courage to do the right things. I don't if care if any, you. any of these persons come from the south or from the north. No, 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 at all. At all. You're just uh, concerned we about quality. We have no business of where you come from. Once you are Nigerian and you are competent and you have got the knowledge and the character, you are the person. How do you pick this or how do you determine these kind of people? Oh, there are criterions around the world. There are best practices. And what are they? You basically... I mean, your qualification and your, your CV. Will Education, tell us exactly. qualification? Yeah, yeah. Or work, work experience? Exactly. And, and what you have been able to achieve. If, if you have, you know, undertaken assignments, it will show. And the records can be checked. It doesn't matter if they were politicians before. No, no, they it doesn't. private no, sector no, people. No, 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 no. In fact, you know, modern governance, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a corporate scientific business at the moment. Governance in the 21st century is a corporate scientific business. When you come from the private sector, you, 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 you are able to do more. All right. Yeah. Dr. Usman Bugaje, a former member of the National Assembly and, of course, a member of the Rescue Nigeria Project. Thank you so much, Dr. Bugaje. It's, it's my pleasure. You again. Thank you Thank so much. You. Let me allow you to go because you said you had an engagement. And I leave my brothers with you. I'm sure they'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So Thank let you, me you. allow Dr. Ado to respond to what uh, Honorable Ali you said earlier. Uh, he said, in your days, I mean, when PDP was in power, that corruption was an open play. Well, 
When PDP was in power, I was in the villa. And I have never seen where they sit down uh, and discuss it. Certainly, I did not discuss it. I did not do it. By the time we left office in the villa, you know, I had just maybe 38,000 Naira in my account. You can go and check it in Diamond Bank, all Diamond Bank now. You as, a, in, you as, as, a as an individual. So that tells you that there were within the PDP government people of high integrity. And they did not, uh, in, in, you know, engage in this type of thing. So, are you so, saying that so what, 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 actually, what, what he said saying, that a bit, a corruption was being discussed in the is, open? It's absolutely not true. And besides, you will determine these things. These things, they are prima facie. You know, if you have money, people know it. People, I know the APC people. I know those who were in APC before they got into government. I know them now when they are in government and. The facts out there says differently. The facts out there. So and what, what, and you, what, and what, and what are you saying about what is corruption actually? If you go definitive, corruption is the distortion of something that gives you know, a negative result. Anything. You can corrupt a pure water by putting impurity in it. So we have seen that in APC, corruption thrives. The rule of law has been put aside. Now, if you want to fight corruption, EFCC is the known uh, institution for fighting corruption. How was the EFC, EFCC chairman appointed? The Senate refused to uh, validate him. They refused to confirm him. By law, the law requires that you confirm. Senate confirmed. Senate said we don't confirm. Yet, the president continued with him in an acting capacity. You know what that means? It means that the president actually can appoint all his ministers in acting capacity and they remain and do the job that the uh, substantive. Is that uh, corruption for you? It is absolutely. Uh, because corrupt. we need to wrap up now. It is corruption. Yeah, it is corruption. I wanted to you to it react. It is corruption at the highest level. No, no, you, you see, probably doctor had forgotten that some people went to court to challenge that process. And it, they were defeated. That the president never act, he did not act in error. Well, there was nothing wrong at, with what Magu did. Nothing. He absolutely. has the power to have the, the man in acting capacity. Absolutely. Surely. They went to court. They went to court and they lost. So what are we talking about? The final thought, I mean, the final point that I wanted us to talk about is what the southern governors said. That they want the presidency to go to the south in 2023. Let me begin with yeah. you. Do you yeah. agree? I totally don't agree with them. Because, you see, I told you that, look, I believe in zoning. But nobody in this country, let me speak now as a Nigerian, also as a northerner. Nobody, nobody in this country can intimidate or should intimidate us from the north. Because it is, leadership has got nothing to do with tribe, religion, or ethnicity. You cannot, as a southern governor or a southerner, say that the president must come from there. I, for one... I, as a Muslim, Fulani, a northerner, went to court against Eradua, got judgment for Jonathan Goodluck to be president of this country. I mean, a Fulani, a Muslim, a hard man. So if anybody from the South is intimidating us this way, that will not, we will not agree. It, it, it doesn't mean intimidation. They're it just is. hearing it, their views. Because look, how can, you, how can a Democrat be speaking in that manner? How? Dr. Ado, do you agree? Uh, that uh, well, from what he no, said, no, of course, I don't. Uh, you know, I have written uh, an article and I support the position of the southern governors. I am with them, not because they say it, I have even said it long before now. See, <clears throat> politics and nation building is not about the next election, it's not even about the next generation, it's multi generational. So, you cannot say that you are going to hold on to power. I've seen what some of my brothers in the North say, that we have the numerical strength. Yes, you have the numerical strength, but you can use the numerical strength directly 
sometimes to your benefit. At the same time, you can use your numerical strength indirectly by supporting another group, and that even builds the country more you know, stronger. Unfortunately, we are totally out of time, but I must sincerely thank you. Honorable Farouk Adamo Ali, it's good to see you again. Dr. Ado, it's been a long time, and it's good to see you. Thank, thank you, you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. But that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shua Kimale. Bye-bye.